All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about induction coils. We're going to talk about what they are, um, how they work, and why we use them in ham radio. We're going to talk specifically about this one that I built. Uh, we're going to hook it up to a meter. We're going to test it. And then eventually in a follow-up video, we're going to build an antenna using this induction coil and see how it performs. So uh, let's get started. But before we do, I wanted to mention that down here, there are a couple of buttons, a like button, a subscribe button, a comment button. Go ahead and click them. It'll make you happy. All right, so hopefully everybody made it back. We're going to start this conversation off by asking what the heck is an induction coil? So what I wrote down here is, is that when electrical current flows through conductive material, in our case wire, a magnetic field is generated. Coiling wire around a ferrite or an iron core creates an inductor which will store energy in a magnetic field. Um, now in the case of this particular induction coil, it is not wrapped around iron or ferrite, but the, co the coil still will create that magnetic field. In this one, I wrapped it around some PVC pipe. And we're going to talk more about that later. When the current stops flowing through your conductive material, um, this magnetic field, it will collapse or dissipate. It'll go away. If the current switches direction, the polarity of the field flips. And we're going to talk more about that in the coming slides. So you may be asking, why do you want or need an induction coil? And what I wrote down is, is that ham radio employs alternating current or AC in antenna systems, not DC current, but AC current. As current alternates along the antenna element, the magnetic field of the inductor cycles through generation, collapse, polarity swap, generation, collapse, etc., and it keeps going through that cycle. This process can oppose the flow of current. At higher frequency, the opposition increases, which can result in blocking or filtering the current, much like in a choke. And that's what we're specifically interested in. Now, you might be saying, well, why are you interested in that? So I'm going to build an EdenFed half-wave antenna based off of this diagram. This diagram is floating around the internet. I do not know who created it. I want to say thanks to whoever did. I would give you attribution if I knew who you were, but I don't, so I can't. Um, when you take a look at this, uh, I want to mention that a half-wave um, EdenFed antenna is generally a half of a wavelength of the lowest frequency that you want to use it on. Now I'm going to build a 40 meter and fed half wave antenna. And that means that my antenna element needs to be about 20 meters long, right? Half the wavelength. Um, and that's about 66 feet. Now, if you take a look at this diagram on the lower portion of the diagram, there is an antenna depicted as 20 dash, I'm sorry, 40 dash 20 dash 10 meters. And that means that this antenna should be resonant or work well across those different bands. And then you can see the overall length of this antenna is 10.1 meters. Then you have your loading coil um, or your induction coil, and then it's 1.85 meters. So we're looking at around 12 meters versus 20 meters, and that's around 44 feet versus the 66 feet. Now, I may have an instance or an environment where I want to deploy a smaller antenna, but I still want to operate on 40 meters because I love 40 meters. So the plan here is, is to build what is called a shorty 40 antenna. Now, the way that this is going to work is, is that when I'm operating on 40 meters, I'm going to utilize the entire antenna, all 12 meters. When I'm operating on the 20 meter band or 20 meter segments, the 14 megahertz range, What's going to happen is, is that this induction coil, if everything goes according to plan, will choke or filter out frequencies that are at that 14 megahertz uh, frequency and, or, or that 14 megahertz setting. And what will happen is, is that it will stop at the induction coil and thus electrically shorten my antenna, making it look like a 20 meter and fed half wave at that point. So it's just a unique or a clever way to be able to shorten the length of an antenna and still get some of the capability that you're looking for. The top part of this diagram depicts an 80 meter and fed half wave where the same principles apply. Now, what it says here is, is I want a 34 micro Henry coil, and that's what we built. The instructions here say to do 90 turns of one millimeter wire. Um, and you want to wind those on, you want to wind those on a 19 uh, millimeter PVC tube. And uh, we're going to go through those measurements, we're going to go through those recommendations, and we're going to talk about how I built this coil in a few minutes. So I just wanted to add in a little bit more info. 
Um, an inductor is measured in terms of inductance. So the value or the unit that we use is called the Henry. So one Henry is the impedance value of one volt of force being implied to a conductor at a rate of one amp per second. Um, that sounds like a lot of math and figuring and all that kind of stuff. But if you think about Ohm's law, you, you have to remember volts are what pushes current. Uh, the flow of current is measured in amps. And then we have resistance, which uh, Im impacts the flow of current. And in this case, we have inductive resistance. Um, the inductance of the loading coil in this video will be measured in microhenries because the amount of current or volts that we're pushing through this is significantly low. Um, in this case, we are looking at 34 microhenries. Um, a henry is 0.5 five zeros and a one of a Henry. So what we have here, and I'll include a link to this below, is an in, a coil inductance calculator. Um, in here, you can set your values to inches or centimeters, and we are going to use centimeters. Why? It just seems like it's a little bit easier. Um, and we're going to do a single layer coil. And here's the formula, and I wouldn't get too caught up in this formula. Um, it tells you uh, that your inductance will equal the radius squared times turn squared uh, divided by 9 times the radius plus 10 times the length. But we don't need to do all that because this calculator figures it out for us. Uh, there is a diagram here that shows how you figure out what your, your, um, your diameter is going to be and the length. So your diameter does need to include the windings that uh, you have on here. So I played around with a bunch of different numbers when I was trying to figure this out. And so I'm going to go ahead and enter in the values that, um, that I eventually used uh, for building this coil. So here are the values entered in, and uh, here's what I came up with. I did have to play around with this a lot to figure it out exactly. Um, I will get 34 microhenries, which is the required value, if I do 72 turns um, with a diameter of 2.36 centimeters for a length of 7.3 centimeters. Now, let's take a look at the build, and we're going to measure the coil, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about why the recommended values didn't work well for me and why these values didn't work well for me. So here's the coil. I flashed it a few times during this video. For some reason, I'm quite proud of this. It's the second one that I've built. Um, the first one I built uh, using the same materials, and it didn't turn out uh, the way I expected it because I used the values that came up in the calculator. And then here is the... I'm not going to call it wasted um, magnet wire that I chose to use because I'll just throw this into a bucket and I will use that for future projects. Um, but what I did use is this um, magnet wire, and I can't pronounce the name of this company, so I'm sorry, and it's 18 gauge. I don't know if you can see that here. Um, 18 gauge is one millimeter. And when I go ahead and I actually, let me see if I can find the end of this. The end, the end's always poking out and causing me problems until I wanted to for the video. Um, if I take a look at this coil, I mean, I'm sorry, this, this wire, and I use my calipers to measure it, um, right there it says one millimeter, but you can see that when I squeeze down tight, it is actually 0.8 of a millimeter. So what that did is when I built the original coil is it impacted the length of the coil, and I was light on um, microhenries. And so... Uh, I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to build the, the coil in a working fashion and I had to rebuild it. So what I did the second time is, is that I just wrapped this many, many more times than I thought I would need. And then I would unwind a winding until I got to the correct value. The other thing, this is a sample of the pipe that I was using, uh, is I would go ahead and I would squeeze this and then you can see it's about uh, 2.11 centimeters. So what I should have done is taken two point, let's just say it, call it 2.10, 2.10, and then I should have added the 8 and 8 because the wire goes on both sides, which would be 0.16. This would take me to 2.26, but I rounded up a little bit um, thinking that this was one, one millimeter wire, which it wasn't. Um, and that caused me a little bit of a problem. So to test this out, what I have here is an LC meter, which measures um, inductance and it measures capacitance. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it on. This meter is pretty handy. I can run it off of USB power. I can run it off of AC power or I can run it off of batteries. Um, and we have batteries here in this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick test to see if this needs to be calibrated by hooking the or shorting 
the two leads together and it is calibrated when your number or your measure here is zero microhenries. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to connect this side and then I'm going to connect this side and we're going to see what I come up with. And it's just over uh, 34 microhenries, a 34.4. Now, originally I was a little concerned that this might not be the correct value that I needed, but um, that diagram that I showed you that says 34, there's also diagrams out there that say 35. So we're going to roll the dice, we're going to build an antenna, we're going to use this coil, and we're going to see how it turns out. But that's going to be in a future video. I wanted to create this video as a reference for that, um, so people would understand what this loading coil is and why I'm using it. Anyhow, I want to say thanks, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.